Hey guys, welcome back to Schoolhouse Beer and Brewing's Grains to Glass, your online brewing tutorial at home. Today we're going to be looking at washing your yeast. Hey guys, it's Thomas Monty, owner and operator of Schoolhouse Beer and Brewing. Welcome back to our Grains and Glass series. Today what we're going to be doing is looking at washing yeast. Washing yeast is a good way to reuse your yeast and it's a great way to save a little bit of money as you're brewing also. Now, a little, few things I want to tell you about. One is only wash liquid yeast. Do not, look, uh, do not wash dry yeast. Dry yeast is a one and done solution. I know a lot of you out there might say, hey, I've done it before. I've talked to the manufacturers. They even say because of the yeast nutrients that is used to dehydrate and then when you rehydrate, and then you try to stress it out and grow it one more time, it's not meant for that. So what we're looking at is some yeast that's liquid. What we did here at Schoolhouse is we split batch one pale ale and I wanted to show our home brew club that meets the first and third Thursday of each month about what yeast actually tastes like. So I took Omega's West Coast, British, Irish, and um, their Belgian ale yeast and I split batch them into basically two gallon batches and I don't want to waste that yeast so what I'm going to do today is show you exactly how to wash the yeast so we can reuse that again here we go let's go to the lab so you're going to need a little bit of equipment on this like I said before we did a basically a one gallon batch so this is our primary this is where the beer is sitting we're going to have two one gallon uh, jugs. One's going to be used for the, the purified water you'll see in a minute. The other one is going to actually be our secondary. I'm going to need a funnel. This will make it a lot easier. I'm using a mini siphon because I have a mini batch. Some sanitizer and some purified water. That's basically everything you're going to need here. Oh, don't forget your airlock because we're going to need that for our secondary. So let's go to our first step. So so silly me, I forgot one of the most important things that we're going to need are mason jars. I usually get about three out. You might not, I might not need that many for this batch, but what we need to do first is take our purified water. And I actually still like to boil the water. The reason why is I know it says it's purified. I just don't trust anybody. Um, that's a... Not a big, uh, don't, can ask anybody. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the water. For this one round, since I'm only doing a one gallon batch, I'm going to use a half gallon worth of water. It's going to make it pretty simple to separate uh, a little bit easier because the trub is, uh, there's a lot less trub. If you're doing a five gallon batch, I definitely suggest using a gallon of purified water while you're doing it. Now, your mason jars. Everything you do from this point on, you're going to want to sanitize. Everything that touches this is going to need to be sanitized because your yeast is going to be very, very, very vulnerable to infection. And the last thing you want to do is to be uh, repitching infected yeast on good wort. You can only imagine how that's going to end. So all we do, we're going to drop them in our sanitizer here. And even our lids. And I'm just going to leave them in here to sanitize while we're waiting for the boil and then when we wash. Okay, so while we're waiting for that half gallon of water to boil, what I'm going to do is actually siphon over the beer that from the primary to the secondary. Um, like I said, this is a West Coast Ale from Omega. The things you're going to need is your auto siphon. You're also going to need a, I'm going to need a one gallon um, secondary and my funnel. Um, I'm not going to need my funnel for this part, but I'm, I'm still going to sanitize it and start it getting it ready. I'll probably re-sanitize it one more time, but what I'm going to use that for at the moment is I'm going to pour a little bit of this sanitizer into my secondary. Now, I know a lot of people are like really worried about the foam. 
don't fear the foam. It is a uh, food grade, all well not all natural, but it's a food grade acid. So it's no different than what they put on the outside of the fruits or if you get the fruit spray at your house and spray your fruits, it's the same thing. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pour this off back into here. I'm the same way, I look at it and I go, wow, that's a lot of foam, but don't worry about it, seriously. All right, next. I'm gonna take my siphon. And try not to squirt it across the room, <laughs> which would be bad. The hose. Everybody needs a little hose in their life. And we're gonna put that hose, ow, crap. I'm gonna put that hose right on to the nice auto siphon. And what I'm going to do is place my jar onto the ground because remember this is a gravity fed process. Once you get it going, you got it going. Now, one of my tricks and tips for, I didn't see these guys doing that. Um, one of my tricks and tips for how to siphon a beer is pretty simple. You wanna first open up your wart. So I start right in the middle. I give it two good pumps to get it going. And then what I do is I slowly take it down to the trub. And once I start seeing it get cloudy, I pull it back up a hair. Once again, this is a small batch, so there's not a lot of trub in there. Um, and there's gonna be a little bit of yeast at the bottom also. We do have a good high croissant about this large on top, so we do know we had a healthy fermentation. Um, we're just gonna wait now, get our uh, water up to boil and finish the siphon. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, once again, since we just boiled the water, I'm gonna uh, sanitize this jar, this jug really quick, because once again, everything that touches it, including my hands, have been in sanitizer. Uh, pour this off. I'm gonna take the sanitizer, the funnel again with the sanitizer on it. I'm gonna take the, the hot water that we have. Now I've cooled it down a little bit onto the stove, and all I'm gonna do, because you don't wanna pour boiling hot water into this jar because it will burst, but like I said, all right, now what I'm going to do is allow this water to chill down to room temperature. So now that the water is cooled, the water that we boiled is cooled, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pour it into our yeast and our trub down here. Now there's not a lot of trub in this one, so if you don't, if you can actually see a milky white layer at the bottom, chances are most of it is yeast. So on this batch, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to pour it over. And then what I will do I'm not going to pour the whole thing in here because first, this is a one gallon batch. Pour it on, I'm gonna shake it up. Just to get all that yeast into a slurry. Open it back up. Check the bottom, make sure we have a good bit of all the yeast out of there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my jars. Now usually on a five gallon batch, you'll have up to three jars to do this in. 
But for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour it all into one sanitized jar. Or maybe two. <laughs> We do not have enough for three, but yes, I make a little bit of a mess doing this, but it's not a big deal. What we're going to do next, take our lid, if I can find it, and put it on top. So now you can see that this is a good slurry. What we're going to do next is I'm going to throw it back in the refrigerator for about 20 to 30 minutes to let it settle, settle out. And then we're going to see the, the three separated layers. What you're going to usually see, we don't know if I'm going to see it on this batch, but you're going to see liquid, which is the water. Then you're going to see a little line of dark trub, and then underneath is going to be milky white yeast. So what we're going to do is we're going to let them set and we'll go from there. So it's been about an hour and um, you can see that it has started to separate a little bit. You might not be able to see the, the line, but if you look really closely right here, you'll start to see a line of yeast. Now remember that this yeast was pretty clean. We didn't have a lot of trub because we split batched it. So the trub is probably in other batches. If you get three lines, one would be your liquid, one would be your trub, and underneath will be a milky white. That milky white is what you're really looking for when it comes to your yeast. Uh, how you would get rid of that is you're going to pour off the liquid and all the darkness that you can, and then you'd have, you do it on multiple batches, then combine them. This is going to completely separate over the next 24 hours or so. So then I have a completely new yeast to, to use. The great part about it is you can do a starter on this. If you need to watch a starter video, click the button above and it will show you exactly what, uh, how to start this all over to grow those cells up. To find out the right amount of pitch that you need, once again, click the video up here and you can go over to our pitch rate video. Well, that's how you wash your yeast. Hope you guys learned a lot. I sure did. As like we like to say, please subscribe. Give us uh, some ratings. We also have a new podcast called The Motley Brew, M-O-T-L-E-Y-B-R-U. Um, it's on iTunes and the Google Play. Check those out. And if you actually mention um, this grains to glass, Yeast washing in the next seven days at the shop will give you 50% off all yeast. Cheers.